Welcome back to GIS Analysis at the University of Alaska Fairbanks. In this session, we're going to work with rasters that represent elevation surfaces or depth surfaces. The center of every pixel will have an elevation value or a depth value. So to start, we'll make a test raster. We'll use the Create Fishnet tool and we'll make squares that are 10 rows by 10 columns and each square will have a dimension of 10 as a width and 10 as a height. And then I will name my squares, squares 10 meters, and the origin will be 0, 0, and the y-axis will go straight north. So 0 and then any value in the y that's greater than 0. Next, let's label our squares with, in this example, it'll be a short integer field. And then we'll calculate the elevation to be equal to the object ID. Let's change our label field from object ID to elevation because we're going to be modifying these elevation values. Next, use the select features by polygon. Select the first four rows and then we'll calculate a new elevation for these selected four rows. Using the field calculator, we'll do a calculation. Elevation is equal to 100 minus the object ID. So the result is these rows have higher elevation. And as we go to the north, we go lower and lower in elevation. In contrast to these, as we go to the south, we have lower and lower elevation. And finally, let's make a little depression. So if we select these rows, we'll use the field calculator and we'll subtract 40 from these values. Take the current elevation value and minus 40. So now we have a depression in this area lower elevation. So we'll clear our selection. We use the tool polygon to raster with our polygons and the value field will be our pixel value which will be elevation and I output it to my test 3D geo database named it raster surface elevation and finally the cell size will be the same as our polygon which is 10 meters wide by 10 meters high. Let's symbolize our polygons as hollow, and then we'll assign some color ramp to our raster surface. So I'll assign it this color ramp with snow at higher elevations, light green at lower elevations. So now we have a raster where every cell is a 10 meter cell. We also have our original square so we can label what the actual elevation is inside every cell. Let's exit out of ArcMap and we'll look at this surface in 3Ds using ArcScene. So we'll exit out of ArcMap and then Programs, ArcGIS, ArcScene. So we'll add our raster to our ArcScene. And we'll give it the same color ramp that we had before. So then if we go to properties for our raster surface layer, under base heights, we would say we're using the elevation values as a surface. So floating on a custom surface named raster or raster layer. And then under scene layers, Scene properties, calculate the vertical exaggeration. So it's set at 0.11. Let's make it a little more exaggerated. So let's do 0.5. And let's give the background color some sky blue background color. And then right mouse click, zoom to layer. So here is our surface. And you can see that there is a depression at the center of our surface. You can also see that this plane 
is in north facing and this plane is south facing. So our elevation ranges from 4 to 100. So let's make some contour lines of equal elevation using the contour tool. Input raster is our surface raster and our output will be a line feature class. I named it contours 10 meters and then as the user we decide what the contour interval will be. Here every line will represent equal elevation in an interval of 10 meters. So right now ArcScene does not know that this line layer represents elevation. So if we go to properties, the base heights tab, and use an expression. The expression is use the contour field. That will tell ArcScene what the elevation of every line is. And then we want it a little bit on top of our surface. So let's float it above our surface five meters so we can easily see it above our elevation surface. So here are our contour lines. They're floating five meters above our elevation surface. And if we open up the attribute table, here for example is the 50 meter contour. And here's a 10 meter contour. And here's the 90 meter contour, etc. We may have an application where we want to see specific contours. For example, we might want to see show us the contour at 5 meters and the contour at 50 meters and the contour at 95 meters. We can use a tool contour list to specify the exact contour intervals we're interested in. In this example, our output will be a line feature class contours 5, 50, 95 meters. And then we simply specify the contour lines. So at 5 meters elevation, at 50 meters elevation, and at 95 meters elevation. Once again, we have to tell ArcScene what attribute represents elevation. So use constant or expression, and then contour is the field that holds the elevation of every line. And then we'll float it five meters above our surface. And then let's give every line that has a different elevation a different symbol. Add all the different contour elevation values, and then you could assign whatever symbol you want for each value. Here the blue contour represents 5 meters elevation, the green contour lines represent 50 meters elevation, and these white contour lines represent 95 meter elevation. Occasionally we're interested in the direction of slope for every pixel in our surface elevation raster. Here we can use the aspect tool which will return the maximum slope direction for every pixel where it will be from 0 to 360. For example, a value of 90 would be sloping east, a value of 180 would be sloping south, a value of 270 would be sloping to the west, and then 360 or 0 would be sloping to the north. And if it's flat as a pancake, it will get a value of negative 1. Here is the output raster, and you'll notice that north is symbolized in red. Here, all these pixels are north facing, and here's the surface raster. So they are indeed facing north, where this is the north direction. And then these pixels are facing south. They get values of south, and here we have a pixel facing southeast, etc. To do the same thing, we could calculate slope using the slope geoprocessing tool. You as a user have the option, what is the units for output? Could be degree slope, for example, 45 degrees would be a slope where the vertical gain is the same as your horizontal distance, or a percent slope, for example, if the vertical gain is the same as your horizontal distance, the percent slope would be 100% slope. Here we have the slope steepness, where the steeper the slope, the hotter the color. The steepest slope would be this pixel right here, 
which is this really steep gradient right there. And then these have uniform slopes, so they have sort of a uniform green color. We may be interested in where is the steepest pixel, so let's change the symbology of our slope steepness to stretched, and we'll go from cool to hot. The steepest pixel has a value of 350% slope. Let's isolate that steep pixel using the con tool. So we can't find the exact value because the exact value might be 350.036.3735.3347. We don't know what the exact value of the highest steepness is. We'll use the expression value greater than 350. If a pixel has a slope percent above 350%, we'll give that a value of 1, and we'll output that to a raster named steepest pixel. All the other pixels will become no data. Next, let's float this steepest pixel on our surface so we can see it. Go to Properties, and then Base Heights. We'll float it on our surface, which is our surface elevation, and then let's give it an offset of 5 meters so we can see it on top of our surface. Here is the steepest pixel at this location, and you can see it is very, very steep. Let's remove all our layers except for our contour at 550 and 95 meters and our original surface elevation. We might be interested in if the groundwater is at 50 meters, what is the volume of water in this area that's lower than 50 meters? So let's do a definition query to our contour. Is the contour equal to 50 meters? And then we'll name this layer contour at 50 meters. So we want to know if the groundwater is at this elevation, how much volume of water is below that elevation. And then if we go to properties, and then base heights, we'll give this fishnet all the squares have the same elevation of 50 meters. So here would be the volume that's filled with water 50 meters or below. So everything below this reference plane of 50 meters. We can use the tool surface volume where we input our elevation surface and we're going to output to a text file and then our reference plane. So if I say show help, we have an option of above or below. So above, the volume would be the volume above the reference plane. So in this case, we want what is the volume below our reference plane in the area below this reference surface. So one way to represent surfaces is using a raster. Another way to representing surfaces is to use triangles. And that's what we're going to cover in the next video session, triangles called tins.